Hi, so today on Therapy with B, I have St. Louis rapper 26, Unsolved Murder Case, and today we're just gonna talk about rap, where he started, and where he is today. All right, so, hi, how are you? No, I'm doing good. That's good, that's good. So again, my name is B, and today we're just gonna talk about, you know, music and where you started, things like that. So, exactly how old were you when you started making music and what inspired it? Uh, when I started, shoot, I started right when I got out of high school, so I want to say like 18. Huh. And what inspired me was, you know, I always had this, I always loved music so hard, but what inspired me was just me being a music geek, how these artists can melodize their music and make the sound just, you know, you can feel it. I'm like, yeah, man, I got to get into, you know, this music thing. Okay, so with that, I mean, like, what inspires your music? I've kind of heard some of your music, and it sounds like uh, you kind of rap about being portrayed and, like, friends who turned on you and just kind of being alone. What is that like? Um, uh, hey, like, yeah, that's, like, that's basically the main inspiration on it. And, like, with people, you know, doing what they do, it, some people it breaks down, some people it make you strong, and in my case, it made me strong physically and mentally. Cause the you know, the same the same, you know, group of friends I grew up with, they tried to break me down emotionally, you know, couldn't do that. Tried to, you know, shoot me, kill me, I'm still here, you know. So it's just making me strong. That's what keeps me going every day. So like as far as like you all being like they go to the house that everybody go to and that you know but at the same time people you know still treat you guys as if that's not the case and it sounds like if you have experienced that repetitively as a child with siblings well probably not siblings but like other family members and friends as you were growing up and so at this point where how do you feel about that now uh, at this point you know we gonna be close to you know, that regardless. Cause you know, all my siblings, all my, you know, all my cousins, all my loved we didn't all experience that time when we running with friends and thinking they are real friends. Mm -hmm. So like, now it's only you, you can't be around if you ain't family. You know, it's real like, you know, I look at it like this. Your family holds you up when you in the gym, your friends ain't. I got locked up, I ain't even called my mama, she was out of town. But when she got back in town, she bailed me up. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was calling the niggas that was saying, oh, okay, we gonna ride with you. I'm testing them, like, mm -hmm. okay, can y'all get this bill money? I'm just, you know, mm -hmm. I'm playing the game while I'm, while I'm sitting in Clayton. Mm -hmm. Niggas, yeah, bro, I got you. Oh, we almost had it. Man, I'm on my way home, man. You know? So when, when you got out, did you continue to talk to them? When I got out, they showed me a lot. I continued to talk to him for a little minute, but that's what caused me. There's a whole lot that caused me to cut niggas off. Cause I like it. It's like if you come around me or any of my family, we gonna treat you like family. Mm -hmm. So little disputes and little stuff, you let that go. Cause we we about getting money. So like, what caused me to leave niggas alone was we out here moving. We getting into shootouts. Niggas not shooting back. I'm the only one shooting and we got guns in this car. Niggas telling me they ain't shoot because they, they have a clear shot. Like, I, like, nigga, I smack the shit out of you. You play with me like that. Mm -hmm. And shit, like, niggas shooting up the truck. You hop on Snapchat. Get the, look, there's not no advertising, man. Mm -hmm. You know, a whole lot of people kill it. Mm -hmm. But not a whole lot of people know how to get away with it. Mm -hmm. When you, like, that's why, like, all my, all my fans and the people that's observing me, to understand it. Mm -hmm. We got brass catch on AOs. Mm -hmm. We hey, we put bags over glizzies to let the stick hang out and just pull the trigger shells don't drop. Like mm -hmm. that's why all this little game, you know, look in the city, people kill, get caught next day. No, nah, I you know, I got too much to lose. Mm -hmm. I, I seen that when I lost my eyes. I like it's a feeling. They're like, I got a daughter. Mm -hmm. I never get to see her. So like, it's deep. So when you come around me and eat my family, it's toxic. It's not me. Hey, you would think we should if we should win up acting in the world, should we act? And then once you leave, yeah, you see that? Yeah, that's why I did this, that's why I did this. Mm -hmm. You know, we move around quick. And then that's why it's like, when people get cut off from us or 
just one of us, it hurts more than us getting being dead. Cause that love that we show, it was a family love. Not no, ah, uh, you his partner. Nah, you at our family reunions. You at my mama house every day. You at my cousin. You know where all my people stay at. Mm -hmm. So when the beef get the hit off, you you already know who coming. Mm -hmm. So the rah rah stuff and it ain't it ain't really. So it sounds like through the past experience, now you are able to like analyze people energy. Like at one point, like you said, sometimes your friends would do stuff and you would wave it off because it was a small mishap. But now that you see what type of trauma and like you know tragedy it can cause, now you're actually using that same vibe to analyze when to cut somebody off and to know when energy just ain't pure, you know? So at least you're at that point now you know, because at this point, how exactly did someone get up on you that close? Like, was it because you really trusted this person? Like, is this your close friend, like your day one? Or like somebody where, yeah, I was feuding. You have such a big heart, I can just tell from talking to you that you like to give people more chances. So was it that you gave them another chance when y'all was already like rocky? Ah, uh, no, 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 you see, like, I could, I was running with the two the two main niggas I was running with. I cut them off, and I'm getting I'm I'm gonna hit it on the nose. I cut them off right in April. Like when I got shot, it's crazy. Cause last when I got shot on April 18, 2020, last year 2019, that's the, when I cut them niggas off. So I left them in April 2019. For one, if you can't be around me and say you're not with this stuff, man, don't be around. Me. For two, this not no game. I'm trying to get this money. You don't want to get no work around me, you know? I just cut him off. It's a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Like, you left my brother for dead. Now, if that was your little brother getting his car shut up, I would have been like, turn around, we finna go slide, you know? Because mm -hmm. I'm I'm, I'm family-oriented. Mm -hmm. You know, you you clicking up with the nigga that snitched. You clicking up with the nigga that snitched talking to him on Facebook because I cut you off. You know, it's, it was, a, and I'm not saying I'm the same either. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like, the main reason why I cut, it, 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 people thought it was beef, but I just cut them off. Like, y'all lose skins. Mm -hmm. we, we all live in this one house together. I'm making 4000 a month, and both of y'all leasing on me. I'm feeding your daddy every day. I'm throwing, putting money. I'm driving your truck. After they got shot up, you, you giving me your dirty guns. So if I get caught with you, I think you setting me up. You know what I'm saying? Nah, man, you know, we don't move like this. So, the point where what even led this to get up on me was, it wasn't even, it wasn't even him looking for me. Me and my brother, we, you know, through the year that I cut them off, I progressed with my music, myself, mm -hmm. my family. Mm -hmm. My brother, he copped a uh, Camaro. Mm -hmm. I copped a uh, GXP, Bonneville, and you know, these niggas, they just was hating. Like, they was looking through the screen, just, you know. I post some rats. Oh, he a bitch ass nigga. Oh, look at my, me and my girl got, he had, oh, them 6 9 ass tattoos. Talking hit, but they ain't moving. And shit, um, what happened, what happened was the week before I got shot, you know, we just, the month for real, you know, we just was bouncing our ass around in traffic. You know, I got respect from hoods on hoods. And my mama called me like, hey, these, these little dudes just pulled up on me in the hood and pulled some guns out. They ain't pulling them, they just patted to talk about where your bitch ass son is. So I'm like, all right. You know, I, I, I've been leaving it alone since then. Left it alone. We hit. You know, we do what we do. And the night I got shot, me and my brother, we was simply racing. We hit. We was out there on a quick trip on um, Mohawk Street Road. We seen this Hellcat. Mm -hmm. Just got to slide through the city. And they heard our motors. Like, we, we don't ride around music. They heard our motors. Because they riding past my mama house. Oh, they got a car. Look, uh, putting on snaps. Y'all trying to publicize it like y'all gangsters. You know, I ain't got to publicize nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, I get a new gun. Oh, he, he got a gun. Let me tell you something, bro. Like, all that bitch ass shit, man. Like, I ain't talk. The whole 2019, 2020 when I dropped from unsolved murder case Anthem to later, niggas felt like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. like yeah, it's getting real. So it wasn't, they didn't get up on me, it just was a lucky shot. You heard our cause, mm -hmm. 
shooting down that thing, then you knew it was a, mm -hmm. like in the street that I got shot, I got shot on Goodfellow, you seen us coming from a mile away. We just, we doing a hundred. Niggas didn't shoot until we got down the street past them. Okay. Yeah, then when I got shot, I swore down and I hit the house. I hit, I crashed into somebody's house and a light pole fell on my car. And my brother, he got hit in the face, but his uh, for, um, five, five, six ain't gonna do it, stopped in his face. And he kept going, he tried to turn back. Niggas still shooting. So he called everybody, everybody pulling to the scene. By this, by time, you know, MLMs and all that, all my people pop out. And you know, it just, right then and there, niggas knew it was real. Like, you, like, everything I showed you about me, it is, you know, just because I wasn't living like that at first, that didn't mean it wasn't true. You know what I'm saying? So, and it niggas like, the night literally after I got shot. And it was a whole lot of people trying to play both sides because they knew we was like, damn, their brothers growing up. Um, I got wind and dude went down there in the, uh, you know, in the interrogation room. He confessed. He came out on the scene. The detective, you know, when I woke up, the detective told me everything. I can't see. He just was like, hey, you know, I went through, I think, six surgeries, six surgeries in 24 hours when I got shot. And, you know, the detective woke up. Well, when I woke up, he was standing at the edge of my bed. He was like, we got to do this shot. First thing I said was, drop the charts. You know, we, I'm a real street nigga. I don't do that police stuff. And he was like, stay picked it up when you was on your way to the hospital. That's how, because I've been up, we've been up under investigation, not even just me, since mm -hmm. we've been up under investigation since 2017, because niggas snitching, the same niggas, you know, that I cut off. And he got down there in that interrogation room, told him everything, then snitched on me, how I was doing this with guns, you know, no self-incrimination, man. And then the detective, like, this, like, this a um, weird situation, because, you know, it's all public record, and I'm waiting, to, you know, just um, to get, you know, get, go through the public records to get the interrogation video and everything, because detective was like, we interrogating him, well, you know, he said it was self-defense, he said John didn't show no guns, no nothing. So, he, you know, he's not going to beat the case, but he said that dude was in our ball and crying, talking about, you know, told him my whole life story, how we went to school together, all that. He was, Detective Lilly, he came to me like he was in there ball and crying, talking about when I got shot, he was on the scene talking about his brother gone, his mama gone, and they questioned him, like, what you mean? And he basically broke down and was like, my mama was his mama. She took care of me. That was my, you know, that was my brother, this, this, and that. And they looking like, what type of shit is this? Is it like, you know, it's just a movie, you know? Huh? He can't, he broke, like, literally, the detective was like, he was bald and turd. I'm like, you know, they told me about it. I, they want me to feel sympathy. Man, man, I'm not finna feel no sympathy for you. Right. My people, I woke up, my people's gonna do what they do with boys. <laughs> no self-incrimination. Shoot, let me just keep it <laughs> So with that, I uh, know we talked about relocation. So what would you say, what would you tell people that are not from the city about St. Louis, what you've learned about St. Louis that makes you want to get out the city and continue to chase your dreams at this point? Shoot, sure, people that don't know about St. Louis, don't come out and think this week. Good. You, 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 that, you that new kid on the block, this jailhouse rules and effect the St. Louis. The same rules that you had in jail, in the Justo, the Justice Center, wherever, the Clayton, whatever. You, you got them same rules on the street. You got to think about it deep, too. In jail, it's about who you click with to survive. On the streets, it's about who you click with to survive. We all boxing in, isn't it? This dead end St. Louis. Couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. And thank you so much for, you know, giving everybody that piece of insight. I would say, Crabs in a bucket, but the fact that throughout this entire interview, you basically stated that you still have a big heart and you have it like turn cold or shut out the people who matters most due to your tragedy. So I just think that's the most important part. Yeah, I am. 
Yeah, I got a big car back. Don't let this, you know, this big car might suffocate you. Sometimes it might shoot at you. Sometimes you know, it, it, it's deep. I'm telling you, you know, it's, that's why I say I'm real toxic. I, I put it on the table. You meet me, I'm toxic. Whatever toxic you get, I, I can match that toxic. I can. Always stay true to yourself, though. Not yet, for sure. It ain't, it's, up, it's up for her. That's all I guess. All right, sounds like a plan. So that's 2 6. Thank you so much for joining me today, Therapy with Bree. And it sounds like it's up from here. Always. <laughs> Always. Hey, you can know how to kill, but you got to.